this tutorial I'll be going through with you WDFC stock symbol and I'll go to go through with you I'll just copy that and I will paste that and enter stock and um, on this side on right hand side you can see Wikipedia information and left hand side you can see Google information and if you see the last day, sale um, it means that what this, uh, if I buy the stock right now what I have to pay for that and um, I can see it's 159.04 US dollar right now so if I buy one stock right now I have to pay 159 um, nearly 159 US dollars um, then if I want to know like what when was it founded I can just simply go to Wikipedia I can click there and then I can just see founded and it says it's in 1953 I'll just zoom this part 1953 and I'll just copy that and paste it um, I'll explain you later from where I got the sector uh, now I want to show you about the ratios if I just go to macro trend which is my favorite website for this macro trend and you can see price ratio and you can see price book ratio and I'll just paste paste the symbol for that and copy that and paste there and I can get this uh, part and if I look at the price book ratio um, um, it's 14.10 which means that the stock is 14 times nearly 14 times more expensive than the book value so if somebody buys right now they'll be buying very expensive stock uh, they'll be paying 14 times more price than what they should actually be paying so which makes the stock very expensive but if I just uh, if somebody has bought it like in 2008 November they would have bought the stock very cheap uh, they would have paid twice as much the price 2.35 times price as they should be paying so the book value the real price is nine dollars seventy cent three pence and um, the stock price was twenty two dollars so they were paying twenty two dollars eighty three pence for a stock that is worth nine dollars seventy three cent pence which is still very expensive it's they're paying twice 2.35 times more money for the same thing but if somebody buys it right now they'll be paying 14 times more amount which means the stock is very expensive right now for them to buy um, if I go to other ratios and I can just see the current ratio current ratio should be 1.5 or more than that for it to have a margin of safety um, right now it's 2.07 uh, which is above 1.5 a lot above that so it means the current assets is a lot more than the current liabilities um, so which is very good it should be 1.5 or more than that for it to be safe to invest in there's a margin of safety so let's just see the previous ones it's consistently about 1.5 and here in 2015 um, February it's below 1.5 so which means that it was not it didn't have margin of safety uh, before 2015 okay so after 2015 February it has margin of safety um, a good margin of safety so still it's not below one so which makes it good but not it doesn't give it a lot of margin of safety but still assets are more than liabilities right now but it should be at least 1.5 for it to be good uh, margin of safety so let's just go back and then we just noticed in 2014 uh, May it's above 1.5 and it's consistently above 1.5 previously so only um, in after 2014 uh, August it has been like for few months um, like for six months I think it has been below 1.5 but it's not that below that it's um, it's a, it has been few points below so still it's really really good and the previous um, ratios are really good as well so it's above 1.5 and right now it's above 1.5 so it's not that bad if it's for six months it has been a little bit below 1.5 so it's not that bad if I go to return on equity it tells me what I get uh, when I invest when the investors invest so it should be above 8% or 8% or above that for it to have a good margin of safety so let's see right now it's 43% which is very good and then if I just go back, although it's below 40%, but still it's above 8%. So it has been 
consistently above 8 percent there hasn't been a time since 2006 since we have the data that it has been below 8 percent which means that it's getting a very good return throughout the years like nearly 10 years now or 12 years so it has shown a very good thing now let's look at um, we have gone through that and um, so debt to equity ratio uh, debt to equity ratio is that how much debt long-term debt they have compared to equity it should be 0.5 or below that and you notice that it's 0.41 which makes it ideal it's a good margin of safety it shouldn't be above 0.5 so they are operating on long-term debt, but they have more equity. So it's much safer uh, firm. And if I just go back, but in 2018 May, it has been 0.56, which means that it's not good in terms of margin of safety. So, it, um, and then if I go back, it's if you notice that the long-term debt is 0.15 here in 2017 November. 0.15 billion and the equity is 0.14 billion equity is less than the long-term debt so the company is operating more on long-term debt which is not very good for the firm because it reduces the margin of safety so it has more debt than the equity which is scary to invest in and um, here in 2017 it has the same debt as the equity so which is not very good as well not safe so it, does, it is not very safe to invest in but in 2014 it didn't have like if I just go back it had zero uh, debt it didn't borrow anything here it's fine it's below 0.5 so the previous records are good but right now it's not safe to invest in it because the um, even though right now the it's 0.41 which is safe but still it the consistency it's just still in 2019 it has been go going good but in 2018 in 2017 and 16 uh, 15 16 17 and 18 it has not been very good so I need to be careful I am I might wait for this one so um, now let's look at the uh, let's go back to Google and um, let's look at the dividend yields dividend yield is 1.53 percent which means that uh, even though the dividend yield is, yield is very low but this gives a good picture because the company is making enough money that it can give their shareholders free money so it's a free free money they are giving their shareholders so they have enough money that they can give so which means that the financial position of this firm is good uh, dividend shows that um, and uh, i'm just interested also in the market cap so how big is the firm uh, you can get the market cap here it's 2.19 billion billion so it's big firm and uh, then I'm just interested in finding out what the employees uh, think about this form. So I'll just copy that and I'll paste that and I'll type in Indeed Reviews. And um, I will just find out. Actually, I have the Glassdoor one. I'll just look at the Glassdoor first because Glassdoor is very important as well. And uh, it's 4.1, which is very good star. There, there's only 45 reviews, which is not a lot of reviews. Uh, but uh, they have given 4.1 stars, but it's not a lot of reviews. Uh, 45 reviews is very less. Um, let's look at uh, Indeed. Um, okay, we have only six reviews for this one. So this is not a lot of reviews compared. This is not a lot of reviews. So I, I won't be trusting this much because, uh, you know, I don't have so many reviews for this one. So it's just uh, even though it's 4.5, but I don't have much information. So let's look at uh, another website called Justia Patents. And um, I'll just go to Justia Patents. And we'll see how many patents this firm has because the more the patents or if the firm has patents it gives a competitive edge and it gives a moat to the uh, firm so it means that it is consistently innovating it's consistently um, you know trying to outbeat its competition so I'll just search I'll just type in the name and search it and let's see and uh, I'm just interested I'm not interested in the inventors because they don't have full rights only the assignee and the applicant if it's applicant yeah that's the applicant and the signee 
has the rights full rights of the patent so I'm just interested in the patents so I can see in 2007 it has a patent and then in 1999 they have filed another patent then um, in 2013 they have a patent then then in 2005 they have a patent 2007 2006 which is very good so it means it has been innovating quite a lot 2009 they have filed one 2010 2013 and you, you can just go through 2014 16 so each year nearly each year they are innovating 2017 and so on but i think they have done their recent or the last innovation in november 2017 they have filed and they've got the date of patent in 2019 so i'll be more interested to know that you know nearly each year they have been innovating so which is really good which is very attractive because that means that you know they have a moat uh, so which is very important and uh, the lastly I want to look at the uh, the salaries of key executives I'll just go to Yahoo Finance and I will just type in the search in the um, company and I will click that and I'll go to profile there's a lot of more information but I'll, I'm just sh going to show you um, the key executives salaries only I will just go to the profile what okay so I can see the industry I would the sector I was interested in is basic materials I can see the sector here sector information and the industry as well specialty chemicals and full-time employees and stuff like that but what I, I'm more interested is in is key executives because I need to make sure that they have uh, the information is transparent so the more clear information the company gives the better so it's more transparency you can trust that company maybe so you can see the name of the key executives the titles and the salary so they have given all the salary of all the key executives which is very important um, they haven't hidden anything and you can also compare the salaries with the same sector of basic materials with another firm or its own competitors and see if they have same salaries or you know you can just find out more things about it